return to part one. Part one. You will hear a woman talking to a doctor at a clinic about a medical problem. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to four. Hi, come and take a seat. Thank you. My name's Carl Rogers and I'm one of the doctors here at the Total Health Clinic. So I understand this is your first visit to the clinic? Yes, it is. OK. Well, I hope you'll be very happy with the service you receive here. So if it's all right with you, I'll take a few details to help me give you the best possible service. Sure. So can I check, first of all, that we have the correct personal details for you? So your full name is Julie Ann Garcia? That's correct. Perfect. And can I have a contact phone number? It's 219... Four four two nine seven eight five. Okay, and then can I just check that we have the correct date of birth? October tenth, nineteen ninety-two. Oh, I actually have nineteen ninety-one. I'll just correct that now. Right. So that's all good. Now I just need a few more personal details. Do you have an occupation, either full time or part time? Uh, yes, I work full time in Esterhazy's. You know the restaurant chain. I started off as a waitress there a few years ago, and I'm a manager now. Oh, I know them. Yeah, they're down on 114th Street, aren't they? Uh, that's right. Yeah, I've been there a few times. I just love their salads. <laughs> that's good to hear. Right, so one more thing I need to know before we talk about why you're here, Julie, and that's the name of your insurance company. It's Cawley Life Insurance. That's C-A-W-L-E-Y. Excellent. Thank you so much. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Now, Julie, let's look at how we can help you. So tell me a little about what brought you here today. Well, I've been getting a pain in my knee, the left one. Not very serious at first, but it's gotten worse, so I thought I ought to see someone about it. That's certainly the right decision. So how long have you been aware of this pain? Is it just a few days, or is it longer than that? Longer. It's been worse for the last couple of days, but it's three weeks since I first noticed it. It came on quite gradually, though, so I kind of ignored it at first. And have you taken any medication yourself, or treated it in any way? Um, yeah, I've been taking medication to deal with the pain, Tylenol, and that works okay for a few hours but I don't like to keep taking it. Okay. And what about heat treatment? Have you tried applying heat at all? No, but I have been using ice on it for the last few days. And does that seem to help the pain at all? A little, yes. Good. Now, you look as if you're quite fit normally. I am, yes. So do you do any sport on a regular basis? Yes, I play a lot of tennis. I belong to a club, so I go there a lot. 
I'm quite competitive, so I enjoy that side of it as well as the exercise, but I haven't gone since this started. Sure. And do you do any other types of exercise? Uh, yeah, I sometimes do a little swimming, but usually just when I'm on vacation. But normally I go running a few times a week, maybe three or four times. Mm. So your legs are getting quite a pounding, but you haven't had any problems up to now? No, not with my legs. I did have an accident last year when I slipped and hurt my shoulder, but that's better now. Excellent. And do you have any allergies? No, none that I'm aware of. And do you take any medication on a regular basis? Well, I take vitamins, but that's all. I'm generally very healthy. Okay. Well, let's have a closer look and see what might be causing this problem. If you can just get up... That is the end of part one. You now have one minute to check your answers to part one. Part 2 You will hear a guidance counsellor talking to a group of students. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 14. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 14. Good morning, boys and girls. I'm Stephen, working as the Counselling Administrator at the College's Counselling Administration. Today I would like to talk with you about the counselling team of the school and the services you can be offered. Now three professional counsellors in our team here at St Court. They are Louise Bagshaw, Tony Denby and Naomi Flynn. Each of them holds regular one-on-one -on -one sessions with students, but you cannot start counselling with them until you make an appointment with Naomi Flynn first. Naomi is an expert in meeting freshmen and delivers a preliminary session in which she will tell you what you can expect from counselling. Also, she will ask you a few simple questions related to what you would like to discuss. For those who are feeling a bit worried about the counselling steps, this can indeed be helpful. Naomi is also the best choice for students who can only communicate with a counsellor beyond office hours. She's not in the office on Mondays, but she will start working on Wednesday mornings and works late on Thursday evenings. So, before your first class or after your last class on those days, you can see her. Louise is in our drop-in centre office a whole day. If you want to ask some counsellors for help without a prior appointment, she'll be a more choice. But do notice that if you choose this service, Louise will either see you herself or send you to the next available counsellor. If you want to see a certain counsellor each time when you visit, an appointment in advance is strongly recommended. Online or at reception during office hours are booking forms now available. Tony is our latest joined member of the counselling team. He's the sole male counsellor and has a solid foundation and expertise in stress management and relaxation techniques. Anyone who is trying to handle anxiety is encouraged to see him. A variety of techniques like body awareness, time management, 
and positive reinforcement will be introduced to you by Tony to help you address this problem. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 15 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 15 to 20. Each term, there will be some small team workshops operated by the counselling team, which last for two hours and are all free to the enrolled students. The first workshop we offer is adjusting. For some people, college education is found to be a big shock. It tends to be simple to get lost after the structured learning surroundings of school. Therefore, what is essential for academic success will be shared in this workshop. As anticipated, this offering is targeting first-year students. Getting organised is the service that the second workshop offers, where we are active to motivate you to break off the habit of putting things off. We'll try to help you get the most out of your time and find out the optimal balance between academic and recreational activities. In this workshop, we're catering to a broader crowd, ranging from undergraduates to postgraduates. The next one is a communication workshop. If you've come from overseas, the way people interact here might be quite different to what you're used to. This workshop will recommend some ways of handling many situations to foreign students. For example, they might find themselves struggling on how to talk with teachers and other staff. It will also cover all aspects of multicultural communication. International students will learn a lot from this class, so we particularly encourage you to come along. But I have to say that occasionally local students can find it helpful as well. Everyone is welcome. The work called Anxiety will be available later on in the year, and it will target something you might be familiar with. That is the nerves and the anxiety brought by the coming exams. Lots of students experience their entire academic careers like this, but surely there is a way to solve problems. Come to the Anxiety Workshop, and you can learn several ways to relax and the proper way to breathe as well as meditation and other methods to keep calm. This workshop is designed for everyone who is going to take exams. The last workshop we have is the Motivation Workshop. The theme for this workshop is how to stay on target and be motivated during long-run projects. This workshop is only available for research students. Less advanced students already have some workshops dealing with their needs. Well, that's it. Thanks for listening. If you'd like to learn more information about our services, do visit us at Counselling Service. That is the end of part two. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part two. Part 3 You will hear two students called Dan and Jeannie discussing their studies at university. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26.
Hi, Jeannie. How's it going? Oh, hello, Dan. Pretty well, thanks. Have you managed to get the money for the course yet? Yes, that's all sorted out now, thanks. It took long enough, though. It was practically a year ago that I applied to my local council for a grant, and it took them six months to turn me down. That's really slow. And I thought I was eligible for government funding, but it seems I was mistaken. So then I asked the boss of the company I used to work for if they would sponsor me, and much to my surprise, he said they'd make a contribution. But what about college grants and scholarships? There must be some you could apply for. Yes, there are, but they're all so small that I decided to leave them until I was desperate. Uh -huh. And in fact, I didn't need to apply. My parents had been saying that as I already had a job, I ought to support myself through college. But in the end, they took pity on me, so now I've just about got enough. That's good. <laughs> so now I can put a bit of effort into meeting people. Haven't had time so far. Any suggestions? What about joining some college clubs? Oh, right. You joined several, didn't you? Yes. I'm in the drama club. It's our first performance next week, so we're rehearsing frantically. <laughs> and I've got behind with my work. But it's worth it. I'm hoping to be in the spring production too. Oh, I've never liked acting. Are you doing anything else? I enjoyed singing when I was at school, so I joined a group when I came to college. I don't think the conductor stretches us enough though, so I'll give up after the next concert. And I also joined the debating society. It's fun, but with all the rehearsing I'm doing, something has to go, and I'm afraid that's the one. Do you do any sports? Yes. I'm in one of the hockey teams. I'm not very good, but I'd really miss it if I stopped. I decided to try tennis when I came to college, and I'm finding it pretty tough going. I'm simply not fit enough. <laughs> Nor me. I think I'll give that a miss. I'm hoping it'll help me to build up my stamina, but it'll probably be a long haul. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Thanks. How are you finding the course? I wish we had more seminars. What? I'd have thought we had more than enough already. All those people saying clever things that I could never think of. It's quite interesting, but I wonder if I'm clever enough to be doing this course. I find it helpful to listen to the other people. I like the way we're exploring the subject and working towards getting insight into it. How do you get on with your tutor? I don't think I'm on the same wavelength as mine so I feel I'm not getting anything out of the tutorials. It would be more productive to read a book instead. Oh, mine's very demanding. She gives me lots of feedback and advice, so I've got much better at writing essays. And she's helping me plan my revision for the end of year exams. Oh, do tell me, I always struggle with revision. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Well, the first thing is to find out exactly what's required in the exams. Hmm. Would it help to get hold of some past papers? Yes. They'll help to make it clear. Right, I'll do that. Then what? Then you can sort out your revision priorities, based on what's most likely to come up. I put these on a card and read them through regularly. Uh-huh. But that isn't enough in itself. You also need a timetable to see how you can fit everything in, in the time available. Then keep it in front of you while you're studying. I've done that before, but it hasn't helped me. Maybe you need to do something different every day. So if you break down your revision into small tasks and allocate them to specific days, there's more incentive to tackle them. With big topics, you're more likely to put off starting. Mm, good idea. And as I revise each topic, I write a single paragraph about it. Then later I can read it through quickly and it helps fix things in my mind. Oh, that's brilliant. 
I also write answers to questions for the exam practice. It's hard to make myself do it, though. <laughs> well, I'll try. Thanks a lot, Jeannie. That's a great help. No problem. See you around. Bye. That is the end of part three. You now have 30 seconds to check your answers to part three. Part 4 You will hear part of a lecture about an experimental design for a house. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning. In the last few lectures, I've been talking about the history of domestic building construction. But today, I want to begin looking at some contemporary experimental designs for housing. So, I'm going to start with a house which is constructed more or less under the ground. And one of the interesting things about this project is that the owners, both professionals but not architects, wanted to be closely involved, so they decided to manage the project themselves. Their chief aim was to create somewhere that was as environmentally friendly as possible. But at the same time, they wanted to live somewhere peaceful. They'd both grown up in a rural area and disliked urban life. So the first thing they did was to look for a site, and they found a disused stone quarry in a beautiful area. The price was relatively low, and they liked the idea of recycling the land, as it were. As it was, the quarry was an ugly blot on the landscape, and it wasn't productive any longer, either. They consulted various architects and looked at a number of designs before finally deciding on one. As I've said, it was a design for a sort of underground house, and it was built into the earth itself, with two stories. The north, east, and west sides were set in the earth, and only the sloping, south-facing side was exposed to the light. That was made of a double layer of very strong glass. There were also photovoltaic tiles fixed to the top and bottom of this sloping wall. These are tiles that are designed to store energy from the sun, and the walls had a layer of foam around them too, to increase the insulation. Now, what is of interest to us about this project is the features which make the building energy efficient. Sunlight floods in through the glass wall, and to maximize it, there are lots of mirrors and windows inside the house. That helps to spread the light around, 
So that's the first thing. Light is utilized as fully as possible. In addition, the special tiles on the outside convert energy from the sun and generate some of the house's electricity. In fact, and it is possible that in future the house may even generate an electricity surplus, and that the owners will be able to sell some to the national grid. As well as that, wherever possible, recycled materials have been used. For example, the floors are made of reclaimed wood, and the owners haven't bought a single item of new furniture. They just kept what they already had. And then there's the system for dealing with the waste produced in the house. This is dealt with organically. It's purified by being filtered through reed beds, which have been planted for that purpose in the garden. So the occupants of the house won't pollute the land or use any damaging chemicals. It's true that the actual construction of the house was harmful to the environment, mainly because they had to use massive amounts of concrete, one of the biggest sources of carbon dioxide in manufacturing. And, as you know, this is very damaging to the environment. In total, the house construction has released 70 tons of carbon dioxide into the air. Now that's a frightening thought. However, once the initial debt has been cleared and it's been calculated that this will only take 15 years, this underground house won't cost anything, environmentally I mean, because unlike ordinary houses, it is run in a way that is completely environmentally friendly. So, eco-housing like this is likely to become much more... That is the end of part four. You now have one minute to check your answers to part four. That is the end of the listening test. In the IELTS test, you would now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Certainly, here's a concise guide to writing agree-disagree essays for IELTS writing task 2. Plan to win, grasp the prompt, understand the statement and decide if you agree, disagree, or see a balanced viewpoint. Craft your thesis, take a clear stance, agree-disagree, and prepare reasons to support it. Gather evidence, brainstorm 2-3 strong arguments with real-world examples or research to back them up. Write to impress, hook and thesis, start with an engaging hook. Paraphrase the statement, and state your clear agreement or disagreement. Thesis. Body paragraphs. Dedicate each paragraph to one argument. Use a topic sentence. Explain your reasoning with examples or evidence, and connect your arguments with transitions. Conclude and summarize. Briefly restate your key points and deliver a concluding statement that emphasizes your overall position. Master the game. Structure and language. Maintain a clear four-paragraph structure and showcase your vocabulary and grammar skills. Word count. Aim for 250-270 words. Practice makes perfect. 
Write regularly on different agree-disagree prompts to hone your skills. Avoid these pitfalls. No stance. Don't just list pros and cons. Argue persuasively for your chosen side. Weak arguments. Back up your arguments with evidence. Repetitive language. Use a variety of vocabulary to show fluency. By following.